Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and I want to start tonight... <laughs> I want to start tonight's show with a very important announcement. After much soul-searching, I have decided that I am ready to accept the results of Monday's Powerball lotto drawing. <laughs> I am not the winner, because they stole it from me, and I accept that. <laughs> tonight, of course, they held a drawing for $1.2 billion, and even though we taped this show before the drawing, I'm uh, pretty sure I won that because I used the exact same numbers, okay? <laughs> All right? What are the odds that these numbers don't win two times in a row? <laughs> you know what they say? Doing the same thing and expecting different results is the definition of genius. <laughs> speaking... Speaking of, uh, of gambling, the midterms are just six days away. So yesterday, President Biden rallied for Democrats in Florida. Biden loves Florida because it's the only place he's considered middle-aged. <laughs> of course... There you go. There you go. <laughs> See you later. Of course, Biden appearance wouldn't be complete without a little mix-up. Inflation is a worldwide problem right now because of a war in Iraq and the impact on oil and what Russia's doing. I mean, excuse me, the war in, in Ukraine. Gas prices. Gas prices are high because the darn redcoats are coming. That, that horse tried to warn us, but we didn't listen. Too busy fighting the Viet Cong or trying to turn Kuwait communists with the Death Star they're building. That's no moon, Jack. No, I'm serious. I mean, how are 300 Spartans supposed to defeat a whole army? Okay, come on, Leonidas. No, I'm Syrian, folks. Since he was in Florida, Seemed like a good time to attack Republican senator and dehydrated Mr. Clean, Rick Scott. <laughs> Scott's proposing to subject nearly all federal spending programs to a renewal vote every five years, making Medicare and Social Security more vulnerable to budget cuts. And there is one old man... A little late on that. There was one old man who's not gonna take that. A senator from Florida going after Medicare and Social Security? I tell you what, I don't know where, as they say in Southern, I don't know where y'all been. Hot <laughs> damn, boy. Did he just say, as they say in Southern Delaware? <laughs> you know what they say in Southern Delaware? We are one mile south of Northern Delaware. <laughs> Hot damn, boy. <laughs> it's not just Biden. Right now, both sides are making their closing arguments to voters. The GOP's argument is stop voting. They've been encouraging so-called poll watchers to intimidate voters at drop boxes across the country. Here are two guys in Arizona a few weeks back standing near a drop box in a Phoenix suburb wearing ski masks and body armor. That outfit is appropriate for only two things, intimidating voters or assassinating James Bond in the Alps. <laughs> no surprise, voters felt intimidated, so they went to court. And yesterday, a judge ordered armed election monitors to stay 250 feet away from drop boxes. I think it's fair to say democracy is in danger when ballot boxes take out a restraining order. <laughs> of course, a lot of ballot boxes. Ballot boxes. Of course, a lot of these knuckleheads are motivated by online misinformation about voting, and it's getting worse. On Twitter, lies about voting machines have been a top midterm narrative, including falsely claiming the voting machines were connected to the Internet. And where'd they learn that? The Internet. The internet. <laughs> but everyone knows you can't trust the Internet. I read about it on don'ttrusttheinternet.net. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> okay? As is tradition, there's a lot of misinformation being put out by foreign accounts, like one based in China, which tweeted, a photo of someone holding paper near a purported drop box claiming they were paid by the DNC. This account had 26,000 followers. Its name, Ultra Maga Bella Hot Babe. <laughs> of course it had so many followers. The name is so catchy. Stupid propaganda, ultra maga bella hot babe. Followed by the incels masturbating in their man cave. If you say it loud enough, your loved ones will say stop, babe. Super propaganda, ultra maga bella hot babe. Dumb little lilies, dumb little lie, dumb little lilies, dumb little lie. Thank you very much. Ha, ha, ha.
Go blimey, gov. <laughs> Body Armor Bros by the Ballot Box aren't the only MAGA guys playing dress-up. There's also a group that call themselves the Oath Keepers who are currently on trial for their role in January 6th. They're led by insurrectionist Stuart Rhodes, seen... Wait, where is he? <laughs> All I see are trees, bushes, and two floating eyeballs. <laughs> Rhodes and four of his followers are facing charges of seditious conspiracy for planning to use violence to keep the ex-president in office. Fun fact. They're being tried at the Pretty Man Federal Courthouse. <laughs> if they appeal, it goes to the Handsome Boy Circuit Court, <laughs> then possibly all the way to the Supreme Cutie Patooties. <laughs> January 6th wasn't just about smashing glass and hanging pence. It was also about apps for the table. Because prosecutors say that after the U.S. Capitol attack, members of the Oath Keepers met for a late-night dinner at an Olive Garden. <laughs> Explains their new slogan, When you're here... Your family didn't hug you enough as a child. <laughs> we don't know all the specifics of the dinner, as prosecutors did not divulge the details of what the Oath Keepers ate. Of course they didn't. That's Olive Garden's other slogan, we cannot identify what you ate. <laughs> Pretty sure there was cheese in there, though. Pretty sure. <laughs> Hope that was cheese. What we do know is that the group spent $408.82. Holy minestrone! <laughs> Over $400 of Olive Garden food? That's not a restaurant tab. That's the results of an autopsy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm calling it 945, January 6th, cause of death, pasta that never ended. <laughs> But <laughs> but the Oath Keepers didn't even get to enjoy the tiramisu. They started to realize that law enforcement was searching for them, so they fled the Olive Garden. <laughs> they fled? That can't be easy to flee after dropping $400 at the Olive Garden. <laughs> what? The feds are coming? All right. Oh. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, I'll meet you guys. I'll catch up. Oh. I'm going to hit the John. I'll be right there. So, huh? Question is, did I just stick it out or am I always holding it in? <laughs> I don't even know. At this point, I don't even know. <laughs> The Oath Keeper's lawyer had an interesting spin on their family dinner writing. Rhodes and the other left the Capitol grounds and went to Olive Garden for dinner. Because overthrowing the government was not the Oath Keeper's intent. So his argument is guilty people don't eat dinner after the crime? I know one guy who hasn't watched Dahmer. <laughs> Speaking, yeah, I know. I agree. I agree. Terrible. Speaking of those responsible for January 6th, Fox News. Yesterday, the <laughs> Fox hosts over at uh, Outpounded were all whipped into a froth over a new study which found that in a sample of college staff and students, petting a cat reduces their negative mood. In humans, I should say. There is nothing that can reduce your cat's negative mood. <laughs> Fox News saw this simple feel-good study and reached the obvious conclusion, our children are weak and we must not spare the rod. This is just another example of how uh, we are raising snowflakes. <laughs> because, I mean, if you honestly can't make it in college, then just drop out. I don't think these kids need cats. I think they need discipline. I think they need a slap yep. in the face. I agree. No, no. I, it might sound hard, but I agree. A slap in the face is more enjoyable than cats. <laughs> um. They continued the crazy. It's also part of the indoctrination. I mean, they are being trained. You might go in there thinking, I've got to get my philosophy book, I've got to get, you know, the chemistry book. And then you're told effectively by this, the university, no, you need a puppy. Maybe before they get any books, they should get some glasses, because that student just walked into a pet store. <laughs> Kaylee McEnany talked about her own college experience. 
I don't need to be coddling a puppy. I need my, you know, organic chemistry book if I'm, you know, in, in pre-med here. This is insanity. Give me a cup of coffee, a cookie, and a stack of books, mm -hmm. and I'm set. Wait a minute. You need a comfort cookie? <laughs> With a cup of snowflake coffee? Oh, I bet you studied in some sort of safe building that was up to code. I spent my college years outside naked shouting essays right up my professor's drain pipe. <laughs> St. Anselm of Canterbury states in his ontological argument for the existence of God. <laughs> Ultimately, the Fox hosts complained that getting to pet a dog or a cat in college is just not realistic. No one's going to hand you a puppy in the real world. I hate to say it, but she's right. They're going to hand you two puppies. <laughs> Who makes Fox News angry? You do. Yes, you do. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Senator Elizabeth Warren and former Secretary of Energy Ernest Moniz. But when we come back, election night is in six days. And sadly, you will believe who's running. <laughs>